We've got a call on line, Rafil, where are you there? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Right, so what I've done is you've asked me to explain Le Chatelier's principle and with application to a question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through one of your industrial preparations, the harbour process. Do you remember what that is? Yes. Okay, right, so your harbour process was the industrial preparation of ammonia. Okay. So now we've got this equation, so we've got N2 plus 3H2 goes to 2NH3. I'm sure you've seen this reaction a million times before, am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, right. We're also told that delta H is less than zero. Do you know what that means? Sorry? Do you know what delta H is less than zero? Do you know what that means? The what? Delta H is less than zero. Right, for um, this reaction. Do you know what that it's, means? It's endo, um, less than zero, exo... Good. Okay, right. So exothermic, that means that the reaction produces heat. Okay. Sorry? Yeah. Okay, right. So that's exothermic. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the notes that we need to make. It's very often helpful. When you see delta H is less than zero, we need to say that it's exothermic. Now, in the question, it says explain using Le Chatelier why there's a high temperature and a high pressure during this reaction. Okay. Is this yes. the sort of thing that you're battling with? Yes, how, to, how to explain how this influences our equilibrium? Okay, right now there's a couple of major parts when we need to discuss these things. First, we need to discuss what Le Chatelier's law does. Do you remember what Le Chatelier says? Yes. Okay, right, so Le Chatelier says what? If a stress is applied to a system in equilibrium, what's the system um, going to do? The system is going to adjust itself so it, it, until it gets to a balance so like, from like the left-hand side and the right-hand side to be balanced. Okay, right. Now we've got to be very, very careful about left-hand side, right-hand side. That implies that we're talking specifically about the actual reaction. Now the balance that you're talking about is right, but it means that the forward and the reverse reaction have equalized. Are you happy with that? Yes, sir. Okay, right. So let's just explain the Chatelier's law again. So if a stress is applied to a system, the system is going to adjust itself in order to remove that stress. That's the major thing. That's what I must be thinking about when I explain it. So let's go for it. Okay, so let's first of all explain high temperature. Okay, now the way that I like to explain Le Chatelier, is first identify the stress and what the system is going to do with that stress. Then we're going to see, well, how is that going to, to favor, either a forward or a reverse? Okay, are you yes, with sir. me on that one? Okay, yes, so let's answer the first one. So what is the stress on the system? In the first one. So high temperature, do you agree that that's a stress? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, so we've got a high temperature. So what does the system want to do? It's always the opposite. So that's the second point. Yes. So, so what's the system going to do? I've increased the temperature. The system will try to decrease the temperature. Are you happy with that? Yes. Okay. Right, so this is my reaction. Okay, so the reaction from the system is to decrease temperature. So it's to balance it out. Are you happy with that? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Okay, now, how am I going to decide? Is that going to favor the forward or the reverse reaction? Okay, now how do I decrease temperature? Do I need an exothermic or an endothermic reaction to, to increase or decrease temperature? Endothermic. Okay, right. So endothermic reactions usually get cold. So that's what the system is going to want to do. So we're going to say that endothermic favored. Okay, right, and then from that we can decide if it's forward or reverse. So what do you think, Rufilwe? So we've got um, to say that endothermic must be favored. Yes. So what do you think? Is it the forward or the reverse? Um, it's the, the reverse reaction. Okay, right, so this is going to favor a rever reverse reaction. Very good, because the forward was exothermic, we saw that from the delta H. Yes. Right, so the reverse must be our endothermic. Uh, Okay, but now here's a question. I'm asked, why do they use a high temperature for my harbor process? What do you think? It's favoring the reverse reaction, which is not making my ammonia, but they use it anyway. What other advantage do you think a high temperature might get me? Um, to increase the rate of reaction. Okay, very, very nice. That make, makes sure that I reach equilibrium quickly. Okay, you happy yes, with sir. that? Good. Yes, sir. Right, now the pressure is a little bit more difficult to understand. So here's my stress. So I'm going to say that my stress is the high pressure. 
You can put probably put this in height in a point form as well, unless they ask specifically for a paragraph. So our stress is high pressure. So what will the system try to do to the pressure? It will try and adjust it. Okay, so it's high now. So what does it want to do? It wants to decrease it. Do you decrease, agree? Decrease the pressure. Okay, right. So how does it react? So we want to decrease. Yes. Okay, that's great. Okay, now we're going to take a look at our reaction and see how the system can decrease the pressure. What do you think? How is the system going to adjust its own pressure? Now, um, okay, right, you got some ideas there? No, okay. this way I have the problem. Okay, very good. So we've hit the nail on the head here. Okay, now pressure is all about moles of gas. And I want you to make sure that you're not talking about liquids or solids. Pressure is something for gases only. Okay, yes. so what we've got to do is we've got to take a look at the two ways that the system can exist. It can exist as either reactants or products. Are you happy with that? Yes. Okay, so my reactants are all on the left-hand side. So let's and find out. Product. Okay, products are where? Sorry? Where, where would I find the products in my reaction? It's, it's on the right-hand side. Okay, very nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the two in terms of moles of gas. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I've got one nitrogen and three hydrogens. So how many moles of gas have I got on the left-hand side? So can I see the equation? Okay. Right. So your equation, right, if you look on your screen, can you see it there? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So I've got one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen. How many moles am I going to have all together on the left-hand side? Um, on, on which side, sir? So on your reactant side, on your left-hand side. Um, you're going to have... So if I say one plus three, I'm going to get? Four. There we go. I've got four moles of gas. Do you see that? Yeah. I've got one from the nitrogen and three from the hydrogen. Okay, yeah. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to the other side. So I'm going to say there's two moles of products. Okay, yeah. right. Now the important thing to see is that if I increase my number of moles of gas, do you agree that pressure will go up as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and if I decrease the number of moles, I will decrease pressure. Okay, so let's see what my system is trying to do. My system had a stress of high pressure. It's going to try to decrease the pressure. So what system system going to try to do? It's going to try to decrease moles. Does that make okay. sense? The system, yes, the system will try to control its pressure by controlling its moles. Yes. Is that okay by you? Yes. Do you understand that? Okay, right. So if I do a reaction and I try to decrease pressure, the way that I do it is by decreasing moles of gas. Okay. Right. Hi. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look to see on my reaction again. Okay. Yes. So, if we take a look at our reaction, how am I going to decrease the moles of gas? Am I going to make more product or am I going to make more reactants? What do you think? Um, you're going to make more product. Okay, good. Because the product is less moles, hey? Sorry? The product is less moles. Is that okay? Oh. Yes. That, that's how my system is going to decrease pressure. Oh, yeah, you're going to have less products. And, yeah. There we go. It looks like the light bulb's gone on. Okay, right. So I had four moles. I went to two. Everything got smaller. That would have decreased the pressure. Yes. Okay, and that's my, how my system is going to do that. So is that favoring forward or reverse? If I'm going towards product, I'm favoring? Sorry? Am I favoring forward or reverse when I make more products? Forward. Okay, right. So that's how I get my reaction to make more of my product. Okay, right. Now there's one last piece of the question that they ask. Discuss the effect of a catalyst on this reaction. What do you think? Is it going to change my equilibrium? No. Okay, right. So a catalyst does not change where my equi equilibrium lies. So then why do I use a catalyst? What does it do? I don't know. Okay, right. So a catalyst like uh, platinum or like iron oxide, the ones that they use inside this, right, what a catalyst does is also increases my rate of reaction. So I can produce my product a lot faster.